It's a new day, it's a new dawn, and I'm feeling good. I hope I feel good after I've cleaned up my Tetratonia dark prints as well. Next day, let's try it with this one. I was going to do an orchid potpourri when I was cleaning up the Nani Puakea Dogashima. If you haven't seen that video, I'll post a card, link in the description. Uh, yeah, and then my brain exploded, so that was it. Took care of that one. New day, new dawn, clean slate, cleaning up Tetratonia dark prints. Let's hope there are no nasty surprises with this one. And I really appreciate your company. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for being back. If you're back, thank you if you're here for the first time. Take a moment to hit that subscribe button. No need for the notification bell because I post daily. For now anyway. <laughs> Good to have you. Thank you once more. Tetradonia Dark Prince is also a batch of an order that was in the same box as a Fusarium infested Francis Fox. She has been in this setup of Lekka and self-watering for three years. She has not ever really done well for me. She has also never bloomed for me, despite the fact that in the first year of having her, I gave her plenty of light to the point that her leaves went into the reddish tinge with the anthocyanin, no blooms, lots of scale. This orchid has always had scale issues, so it's also been constantly maintained with my paintbrush and the alcohol. It's gotten much better since I've been painting it with garlic alcohol. And some of the leaves are looking a lot better as well now. They're a little bit more lush and green as opposed to what I was fighting for years. I lost a lot of middle growth because of scale as well. So I am obviously a little bit apprehensive. It takes me maybe 48 hours, 72 hours to get out and away from the shock of a Fusarium orchid. It's the least things that one would expect, even though in a way, if you've been on my channel, you know why are you not expecting it, especially with this particular order that you've had such a headache with for years. Why are you still surprised? Well, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I just am, let's put it that way. Right, I am not surprised to see a lot of decline, but I'm also not just surprised to see how well some of the roots have been doing. We're gonna get rid of all that gunk in there, but I never disturbed this orchid in the past to clean her up, because for me, sometimes weak orchids, just leave them alone. I mean, if a weak orchid is going to go downhill, no matter how many times you intervene, even possible intervention will make the orchid die faster, not giving you even an opportunity to help it out. So I never ever bothered this orchid in all this time. I've just been flushing a lot, doing what I do with orchids that need a lot of help. As you heard, I've been spraying it a lot, painting it a lot recently, and she is recovering. So now I feel that there is enough strength in this orchid for me to go in and clean her up and then hopefully not set her back but give her a proper start so that she can actually do her thing and become healthy and strong and not languish anymore and pieces are coming off and this is what I was afraid of in the early days when I potted her up I didn't want her to fall into lots of pieces straight away because that would have been even more difficult to take care of but now that she looks a little bit stronger in parts, I mean, there are no guarantees to be honest, but I know for a fact that a few pieces I will be able to maintain and keep safe and grow on. If there are no underlying issues, I have to put that disclaimer in there, unfortunately, if there are no underlying issues. Usually when I see things like this here, a lot of decay, I already have a very suspicious feeling with regards to the F-bomb being in the orchid. This is not the setup because otherwise I would have similar orchids of similar structure and growth habit doing exactly the same thing. So this is for me already a bad sign. But we're gonna just keep the faith. New day, new dawn, we'll keep the faith. Please, please. I would like to make sure that Tetradonia Dark Prince gets a good chance in life. Now that we've had three years of getting it to grow to strength, I don't want this to be its ultimate disturbance and then 
decline ensues. I'll be washing my hands, I'll be right back. Okay, let's clean them up and see what we've got. See how much else falls off this little piece here that I've got. This is just plain RO water now. Because I wanted to deal with her yesterday, I already had her soaked in calcium, magnesium and some seaweed yesterday, so I didn't do that repeat. There was plenty of moisture in the pot for me to get her out. I'm very, very pleased about this piece with so many roots. I am still undecisive as to how I'm gonna pot this one up. I can see that the lecker eventually was okay as a medium. So I may just stick with Lekka again and put her in a smaller pot of sorts or all the pieces go together again in one pot. What a shame. All right, well, collateral damage. And this is why I don't disturb weak orchids. And again, sometimes I might lose them because I haven't disturbed them, but more often than not, I will lose weak orchids because of disturbing them. So. I'm always more of the point of get them in a pot, leave them alone. This was also possible at the time I got this order, it was September. So it wasn't like I had a problem with the um, pot temperatures of being able to acclimate an orchid throughout the summer. September orders for me still allow me to treat orchids, pot them up as if it was early in the season because I have another two months here in Southern Spain of decent temperatures where an orchid that comes in new to a collection still has time to acclimate. I'll be back once I've cleaned up all these pieces to give you an idea of what is going on. I don't want my camera to heat up just like it did yesterday. <laughs> Let's start off with the big piece here. You see, I want to take this off, but we're not going to glean anything out of this rhizome even when I've cut it off because it's already black. Have a look at it anyway. I want to clean it up anyway. There's nothing going to happen on the end of this at all. So literally it can come off right here. All right, get your bifocals out. What are we looking at? That looks clean to me. Your opinion matters. Let me know what you see. Not only is it quite bright, where I'm doing this, but maybe you see more than I do. All eyes on deck. Please do not mistake the brown around the rhizome for being black. I'm paranoid. I see purple now a little bit here. Again, your opinion. Thank you very much for leaving it in the comments below. This is too small for my failing eyes. This is a piece that really doesn't stand a chance at all. We're gonna take care of it anyway and see what happens. But yeah, first of all, what I need to do is give it a good, all of them, give them all the pieces, a really good dousing with insecticidal soap now. Now that they're out, they can be in the fresh air for a little bit and really get in there. One thing is the sheaths. I can't take all the sheaths off because the structures are so tiny, but I can certainly give them a good dousing of insecticidal soap. They don't look too bad. I have hope for these. The only thing that I have now got a little bit of doubt is because I disturbed them. And if they have got Fusarium, if you saw something that I couldn't see in my viewfinder, then the disturbance could now be the last hurrah. That's the only thing where I now kind of think, okay, it was nice getting you to this point. It was nice seeing structures come clean and grow nicely and show a kind of a plumped up version of a leaf as opposed to always me having to scratch away scale and find new scale. That was a nice part to get to. I must say I enjoyed seeing this orchid come around. Pardon the noise of my sprayer. It is quite obnoxious, I admit. <laughs> I do apologize. A little bit of comic relief in a subject that has been quite tense for me in the last 24 hours. 
<laughs> that was not planned. <laughs> but I mean business. I mean business. I want these to be taken care of at the base with insecticidal soap so I'm not skimping and we can have a little giggle. <laughs> right. Have we got them all? Both sides? This one missing this side. Because I did see a little bit of white tucked in here when I was separating them out. Just one more. <laughs> oh, yes, I'm childish like that sometimes. <laughs> My next thought, of course, is how am I going to pot them up? Now that I've got so many pieces, I'd like to get them all in one pot again, but it's going to prove a little bit cumbersome. So what I'm going to try and do, I'm going to put you on a different angle. I need all the space in front of me, and I hope that I can get all the pieces in and you have a good visual of it as well. This is going to be a bit awkward. With the floating today, it may work, it may not work. Usually I like to pot up this way because I can get the leka to fall gently into all the nooks and crannies. Especially when it comes to protecting new roots, it's very, very advantageous to do the wet potting up method. I still have to find a name of how to call this. Wet potting up method. The gentle potting up method, but there's other media you can do a gentle potting up method as well. I'm going to have to find in terminology. By the way, let me know in the comments below, what would you call it? Wet potting up? Floating potting up? <laughs> anyway, it could be a little bit difficult because I have to maneuver pieces in to the pot now in such a way that they will not sort of lean and float away from me. Not as easy with several pieces as it is with one orchid. Let me check if this is visible. Maybe there. That might work better. Right. So far, so good. This is not looking too bad. Got a big piece here. And can I squish you in a little bit? Make room for big brother here. That would be nice. You think? You too? What do you say? I need them at the same level because when it comes to raising them up out of the pot, they need to be coming out at the same time. So these two little ones, maybe they should just be like back to back to each other. Something like that. I hope that was all in shot. If not, repeat. These are two little pieces. They're kind of back to back to each other. Squish them together and see if we can't get them into this little nook here to complete the triangle. Wow, if this works, I'm gonna be super impressed. It's not gonna work if there's still scale down there. Oh, but it's dead. <laughs> yes, maybe not that one. Hang on a second. I have just spied something. Check this out. I can't see if that's in focus. Dang it, these guys, stop. Get away from my orchids. You are not welcome here. How many years does it take for scale and mealybugs and all that stuff to get the hint? They are not welcome. So stop trying. It's not going to change my mind. Ugh, really, really, really gets me. There we go. Give you a little bit more of a fun giggle there. Right. Like this? I like it. We are a go. And I have chosen very, very small lecker for this. Very small lecker. It already wasn't small lecker in the previous time that I had it potted up. So that was okay. That was good thinking in 2018. But now, even smaller. And this is tedious. I'm going to be taking my sweet time and I'll get back when I'm done because this is with so many pieces. I've got to make sure that the lecker falls in. I can't really see all the nooks and crannies in here. So I've got to be a little bit more cautious. I don't want my camera to heat up, but basically I'm going to be taking small amounts of lecker and just teasing them around the edges and then pushing them into place, wiggling a little bit with my finger like that. There she is. I am hopeful. I had a little closer look. 
off camera with a microscope at that rhizome. I don't see fusarium. I don't see it. What I see is black because of old and there's no fusarium to my eye. But again, your opinion really, really is important. It keeps me on my toes, keeps me also vigilant in case, again, I don't spot it. Doesn't look like I've made much of a difference here, except that I do know I've cleaned her up properly. I'm gonna have to add a little bit more lecker right here now that she's drained out. But other than that, she's nicely settled back in. And let's hope that she can now look a little bit more healthy, just like leaves like these. Really want to see more of this. Beautiful new growth as opposed to scratchy, damaged, tired growths. Other than that, you know, she is a quite a cute little orchid. Looks a bit like a tolumnia, has the texture of a tolumnia. Of course, it's not a tolumnia, unless I got a mislabeled one. And if this is a mislabeled orchid and it turns out it is a tolumnia, it's not, I'm kidding. But let's just say if it's mislabeled, then I can be umming and eyeing and guessing, wondering what on earth I'm doing wrong. The whole setup could be wrong if this is not a Tetratonia dark print. I live in faith for the time being that it is not mislabeled. The blooms should be beautiful little, they, should, they have an oncidium kind of look to them, but not quite, but a very, very big lip. So they have a catlier shape with an oncidium style lip and then a deep, deep dark pink. That is what I saw on the webpage. That is why I bought her. Apart from the fact I like this growth habit. But we won't know until she blooms. Let's hope that this has given her a nice fresh start. Thank you very, very much for your time. So, so appreciated. I'm going to get a little bit more lecker, put it down here. And just for the fun of it, I needed this today. I needed this. Thank you for humoring me. After yesterday, I needed this. Your time is very much appreciated. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Please, please stay safe and take care. Bye. <laughs>